Now, not all statistical inferences are made about the mean. In the last, you know, many weeks, we've been talking about, well, if we have a sample with a sample mean of, say, 100 or whatever, what does this say about the population as a whole? We could answer as a pop uh, as a confidence interval saying that, OK, we are 90, 95 percent confident that the mean of this population is in between here and here. Uh, or we could do a test, a significance test to see, well, if we claim that the population mean is 120 uh, and our sample mean is 100, uh, how confident are we in that value uh, to say we reject the claim that the mean is 120 or do we have enough conf uh, do we have enough significance level to, to do that or whatever with, with p-values and so forth. Um, but the, anyways, this chapter, we're going to talk, continue working with confidence intervals and significance tests. Uh, but this time we're changing the uh, type of statistical inference that we're making. Instead of about being the, instead of about uh, an inference about the mean itself, we're going to be looking at what about a proportion of the population and how confident are we in saying, in dealing with statistics of that sort. So let's talk about the definition of a proportion um, and the difference between a population proportion uh, and a sample proportion. But basically a proportion is just, uh, if we took a particular statistical study and say we surveyed a thousand people, let's say we asked them a question, um, do you brush your teeth every day? Uh, and we got a response, right? You know, all a thousand people said, and let's say 75% of people brush their teeth every day or 25%, I don't know what the actual statistic would be, but it's a very common type of statistic, which we just refer to as a proportion, which portion of the population uh, does something which does not um, and basically we're going to be doing our statistical analyses on such data instead of re with regards to the mean so in a lot of ways it's actually simpler than what we've been doing um, but uh, we let's start off with the variables at hand and actually sorry let me get my tablet loaded it's not properly loaded apparently uh, this is not the right page uh, I apologize for the detail, but we use the variable P to stand for the population proportion uh, and we use the variable P hat to refer to the sample proportion. This is sort of like with, uh, with a um, population mean, we use X bar to represent our sample mean. So, you know, in, in our statistical variables so far, sigma stands for standard deviation. Uh, and then when we're talking about a sample, we use S instead, but they're both the same idea. One is the theoretical perfect uh, standard deviation for everyone. And our goal of statistics is to measure a sample and make inferences about the original. Now, we haven't done inferences about sigma. We specifically did inferences about mu in the past all chapters in for the second exam. And you know, we again, we use X bar as a measurement of, uh, again, which stands for the mean of the sample. Um, as an estimate, an unbiased estimator to the population mean. Now again, so with a proportion, P would refer to the uh, variable that we use for the actual proportion of the population. So again, say we did a sample of a thousand people and we got 75% brushed their teeth every day. That would be P hat, the sample proportion. Whereas P, uh, just P without the hat, would stand for the actual proportion. So let's say the actual proportion of people that uh, brush your teeth every day is 70 percent you know again we can use a sample value to estimate that of the actual value which we do not know and we're trying to determine via our survey or whatever else uh, and so let's go ahead and fill in this blank as well the sample proportion is labeled as p hat and a formula for p hat uh, i mean it's it's pretty obvious but basically it's just defined to be a simple ratio how many what what is considered a success uh, and how many total people are we dealing with so like let's say in this in this survey of a thousand people, if I said that 75% brush their teeth every day, that would be 750 out of a thousand. And it's just, usually you're gonna be given these particular numbers. Like what's the number of successes, which is sometimes called X. Uh, and then what's the sample size? That's what we always call N, right? N is just how many people we are, uh, we're getting the data from. Now, What's, what's interesting about um, the sample proportion is much like when we studied uh, X bar with regards to the mean, uh, we can use the, the sample as an unbiased estimator for the mean. Similarly, we can use P hat as an estimator for the proportion P. Uh, and you know, when we take a random, uh, simple random sample of, of people, the problem is it's not always gonna be directly on. 
Uh, and the, but you know what will happen is it will form a normal distribution, uh, and this is what we call the distribution based on a sample proportion. Um, and basically, you notice you know it's the same concept as from before, where the mean is the theoretical uh, perfect value of the population itself. And then if we take sample a simple random sample from the population, we could get a sample that's higher or lower. We don't really know. Uh, and we're most likely going to get a sample that's right on the mean. And you know, the further and further away we are from the mean, the less likely we will get a random sample, assuming that the true, uh, that the true proportional value is p. Now, the first thing that is a little bit different here is the standard deviation. Uh, we don't call sigma anymore, but it, you could call it sigma. Uh, but the standard deviation of a proportion is given uh, the formula in the is given in the packet, or it's in the book at the beginning of the chapter. Uh, and the formula for the standard deviation of a proportion distribution is the square root of p uh, times 1 minus p divided by n. Um, and I wanted to mention, okay, this is a little bit different, but it's not really so different than it was for um, when we first talked about z distributions. If you remember standard deviation before was, well, what's the standard deviation of the actual population divided by the square root of n? Uh, and if you look at the formula here, you could also think about that as the square root of sigma squared over square root of n or the square root of the variance divided by the square root of n. And so really, if you're wondering, well, how do we get the variance based on a, a, a proportion? That can be done by simply calculating the product of the probability or the proportion um, from, from our population multiplied by one minus the proportion. Uh, and to... I don't want to spend forever and I'm, I want to try to wrap up this video so we can get into the first example, but I wanted to briefly say, well, why is this formula the way it is and why does this make sense? But let's throw some numbers into here to make sense. Let's say that we're, we're going back to the example of 75% of people brush their teeth every day, something that I just made up off the top of my head. That would be my value of P. And also usually we want to plug that in as a decimal for these formulas. So basically 0.75 would be P in that case. If you look at that formula, well, the uh, value that we'd plug in, well, we'd have 0 0.75 times one minus 0 0.75 divided by N, whatever the sample size was, which was the thousand. But let's just focus on P times one minus P so we can really try to understand that. Well, that would leave us with 0 0.75 times 0 0.25. But basically what it would give us is the product of the proportion of people who do brush their teeth versus the proportion of the population who do not brush their teeth. Uh, and the further apart those are, actually the smaller this product will become. And, and like, let's say it was a 50-50 split instead, that would actually be the largest variance that you could get. Uh, and, and essentially, it's like, if, if it is a 50-50 split, we don't really know, that it's less predictable, if that makes sense, like if you take a random data point, but if the stronger the probability is for one direction to happen, the less variability you're gonna get. And that's actually what happens with when you take the product of the two probabilities. Um, and you know, there's another way you can describe this as well and think about it, but I think that's good enough for now. Again, it's just a formula I would write down um, for how do you find the standard deviation? But otherwise, basically all the math they're doing is exactly the same. The difference is the standard deviation you're calculating it this way, otherwise the confidence intervals and, this, um, and the significance tests remain the same. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention, like, like when we're talking about, you know, a lot of times we were, you know, in previous examples, we're given sigma, the standard deviation of the population. But as we talked about, usually or often we don't actually know the standard deviation of the real standard deviation of the population but we know the standard deviation of our sample. And we use that as an approximation to the standard deviation of the original, which if you recall, changed it from a Z distribution to a T distribution um, and just slightly affected the, the score, the Z scores and T scores in our, in our intervals, but otherwise nothing changed. Well, and, and remember that we call the standard error, you know, we, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution was this, but the standard deviation uh, when we're dealing with T distributions we called the standard error. And the same thing, the same terminology is used when we uh, don't know the original proportion. Because again, kind of circling back to the example, usually we don't know the actual proportion at hand. Like we use a sample to say, okay, 75% of the sample of those people brush their teeth every day. But we're trying to make inferences about the actual population. And basically remember in, in that particular scenario, we would know P hat, not P. 
And an another point to be made is that we often use p hat as an estimator to p in these formulas, because basically the true standard deviation of the population would be this. But we use p hat as, a, as an estimator for the standard deviation. We just call that the standard error. Now in doing this, you might think that it would change it to a t distribution like we did before, but actually what's nice about proportions is that when you replace p with p hat, you can still use a z distribution um, to do all your mathematics. It's actually more accurate than using a t distribution, but it's not exactly perfect from the mathematical stance, um, but you know, it's, it's commonplace to still do z distribution math from here. Um, but sort of a summarize, if we're trying to work with confidence intervals and we're trying to work with uh, significance tests, essentially uh, we're doing all the same math from before. We're just replacing the standard error with this new formula based on the proportion, which will give us a standard deviation based on various percentages.